Welcome to WXTV, your online source for weatherization training. This is the second installment in our mobile home series, and WXTV is going on the road to Jamestown, North Dakota. Edgar will show us how to assess a home for existing insulation as part of the audit, as well as any repairs that may be needed prior to blowing in new insulation. I'm Edgar Steam. I'm the Housing Supervisor for Community Action Region 6 out of Jamestown, North Dakota. Uh, we're going to show you today how we estimate uh, the floor insulation on a mobile home, uh, roof insulation on a mobile home. We'll go through step by step on the procedure um, and how we determine what's existing for the audit. This is an access hole here where we can get underneath and check that insulation. I take a screwdriver with me, flashlight, and I get up here to the to the belly itself and I take the screwdriver and I just make a nice little hole up in the belly. Not too big, doesn't require a lot of patching. Anyway I'll take and get the cavity depth first just by measuring my screwdriver. Okay we come here with a four inch cavity. Well the belly's hanging down a little bit so that tells us it's probably just two by fours in there. It's an old enough home. I'll actually stick my hand up in there and feel for the direction of the floor joists. Now these floor joists run the long way. You'll have to know this when you go to insulate that that belly. I feel absolutely no insulation at the floor level and approximately three quarters of an inch at the belly, uh, maybe to one inch. Now if you don't know that for sure, you would take a tape measure, you can measure that insulation, you know, crawl underneath there and measure. Uh, so right now I would know that this has floor joists running the long way. It's got one inch of insulation existing. I would take my flashlight, I use a good uh, spotlight, high power. I can look around that whole belly pretty much whatever I can just crawl in a little ways and I can see if there's holes that need to be repaired. Um, I'll document that so that our crews can fix them holes before they blow that part of the belly. I'll take a look and, and see if it's got a hanging belly. I'll need to know that for the audit. This one is actually a flat belly. So we'll be able to use that three and a half inch cavity to determine the amount of insulation we need. Another thing we check uh, inside the home when we're uh, auditing the belly or the floor insulation, we look for holes in the floor. Um, any holes or bad spots in the floor we should repair. Uh, holes, of course, will let the uh, insulation blow right up into the house and we do, uh, we do like to make sure we get that sealed up. All right, we're going to do an audit on the ceiling now, on the roof insulation. Um, I don't know if you can see this hole up here. We drill a hole at the edge or the heel of the home here, of the ceiling, and uh, stick a tape in there to see how deep that is. We got a three inch cavity to the bottom up here. We got a two and a half inch actual cavity to the top of the ceiling panel, and there's about an inch and a half existing in there. So we take that measurement and we go to the center of the ceiling of the home and we take a measurement up there and there it shows eight inches. Now that would be marked down as your center is at eight inches and this actually shows an inch and a half existing, nothing at the roof line. Uh, after doing the measurements on that, we would um, plug them holes of course and then check the rest of the ceiling throughout the home for any uh, damaged areas or holes or ceiling tiles coming down and um, we'd of course write in to have that repaired before we blow that roof. I got the plugs right here they just snap right back into the hole and virtually goes away so uh, that gives you the information that you need to do the audit on the ceiling uh, there's not any real damage in this one where we have to repair anything, so the crew will be good to go. 
Another area you need to check uh, for the ceiling insulation is in the furnace compartments. A lot of times there'll be a hole or something where the chimney goes through. You have to make sure that that's also sealed up. This one here is going to require a, a new collar just to keep that insulation from falling down. Another area you need to check is the water heater closet. Make sure that that chimney is sealed up also where it goes through the ceiling. And in looking here, we can see that it's got a good two, two and a half inch circle all the way around that chimney that needs to be closed off with a collar. Uh, we're gonna close this hole up here by the water heater. Um, we're gonna use um, a little bit of spray foam to seal that up. It seems to be about the best way the most practical way to do it. So go ahead, Ken. It's a pretty unique or pretty good product. Um, once that hardens up, they'll be able to blow the belly and it won't blow up into the house. Makes a pretty good seal. We'll let this set up for a couple hours yet before we blow the belly. Um, and we'll also keep an eye on it as we're blowing to make sure everything's okay. Well, that's it for another episode of WXTV. Those were some great tips for assessing a mobile prior to adding insulation. Stay tuned to other episodes when these crews fire up their hoppers. And thanks for watching. WXTV, your online source for weatherization information, techniques, and expert advice.